Hello, I'm Andrew Lissom and welcome back to FTL. People seem to like me playing FTL. Frankly, I kind of like playing FTL, so let's play some more FTL. Um, we didn't do so well the last two times. We didn't do so well, but I have been practicing. I played it pretty much non-stop over Christmas because... What else was there to do? Um, and I've decided that we're going to try the Osprey this time. That's a Federation Mark A. The Federation Cruiser B is honestly a little bit crappy. I literally just unlocked this because I was like, oh, that's really easy to do. And I completed it and I was like, ah, and it actually kind of sucks. Like, you've only got airlocks here, so how are you meant to vent the weapons and the shields? Oh, by venting everything in the forefront of the ship. Uh, oh, including the med bay. You want to vent the rear? Oh, you're going to have to vent it through the oxygen or through, like, blocking off the doors or camera. Uh, no. I actually don't see anything redeeming about this version at all. It starts with two in the artillery beam. That's cool. Other than that, his weapons are all based around destroying hull, really. And this one's got a uh, a stun chance. Nah, this one's got less crew. No, I prefer A. I really do prefer A. I really don't see what B's got going for it. So I'm going to jump in with the uh, the Osprey. What's also B called? Nissos. Okay, oh, very well. Um, you are going to be called... Sky 99. Sounds like some sort of hull number. Sky 99. Very well. Hal, I'm afraid you will not be called Hal. You will in fact be called Magenta Wolf. I'm just going to go with M Wolf. Can I call you M Wolf? Can I just call you Wolf? Wolf. There we go. Captain Wolf reporting in. Because I always get, like, the human to fly the ship because humans are crappy. The exception to that is maybe the Lanius. I maybe get them to fly the ship because that way if anyone tries to, like, board and take over the cockpit, they're like, Oh my god, why have there's no oxygen in here? Oh, it's a Lanius. Oh. Um, that's one of the things I like the Lanius for. Uh, I will also have the Rock, who is going to be called Richard Fawcett. Let's just call you Fawcett because I'm not sure we'll get the rest of that in. Fawcett. NG. Who is called Tactics? Call you Tactics. Actually, maybe Tactics is is okay because you're a robot, and you are called Viper Thirteen. Maybe Thirteen was like maybe like the number of your brood. I don't know. We're just gonna call you Viper because I will just call you Viper anyway. Uh, and I think we're ready to go. So the plan of this ship is get more weapons. That's pretty much it. Yeah, get more weapons. Um, the burst laser, while it's good, has a long reload time. And it will start to taper off if you don't get a better weapon by sort of the end of uh, Sector 2. Definitely by the end of Sector sort of 3 and 4, you're just going to find yourself completely out of luck. So we're going to start. And I have got a slightly different mod layout this time. I've also installed a mod called Better Starting Scrap or whatever. It's like one of the default mods you get. Uh, I've just included it for the sheer fact that Normally, I would be fine playing the normal mod, but since we are playing for YouTube and you only win like one in ten times according to the maker of the mod, which means like one in a hundred times really, um, I feel that we need a slight buff to be able to allow these to go a little bit easier. So we're going to have a little bit of starting scrap. I actually have no idea what the enemy boss ship is. I have completely forgotten. I don't think I reset it. Hmm, let's jump. So yeah, we do get to basically have bonus starting scrap. Yes. You might call it cheating. I just call choosing how I want to play the game. Right, so I'm going to just like unload on that cockpit, which is the problem with this laser is because it's like 16 seconds. They might repair that pretty quick. There's not much I can do about it. Okay. Uh, now, a number of people have asked me for a mod list. I didn't have a chance to do a mod list before I went away for the holidays. I have got a mod list now. It might be down below if I have remembered. If I haven't, bug me about it on Twitter. Um, one downside about the, uh, the mod list is it doesn't have links. There is a very good reason behind this. If you cannot find the mods yourself, you should not be using mods. Like, literally, it's just a Google away. If you cannot use Google, you probably shouldn't be using mods. There we go. That's the downside of the burst laser. They are now going to disappear. Um, disappoints me a lot. I just got the shield up in time. Jump imminent. No, they're, they're away. Oh, I didn't, I don't got it on auto-fire. Ah, damn it. I would have stopped them, but they'd have just got away again. I need to do a lot more damage. And uh, double jump speed. Oh, store, really? I'm not going to get anything good out of the store at this stage in the game. Excellent. Uh, I'll take your shield out, so you just take consistent damage. This is going to be a bloody battle this early on. 
Ow. See what I mean? Now normally I'd go for the weapons straight over, but by taking down the shields, they're going to be taking consistent damage from the asteroids. In theory, if the other go, bloody asteroids turn up. And there goes my oxygen. Also, I forgot, I normally like to change over the mantis and the rocks to the rocks at the back. Yeah, it can't do that because it's like trying to detonate its FTL drive, but it's got no engine. No. Eh, good about scrap though. Um, yeah, you can fix it by yourself. And you can go back to there. And we have enough scrap to upgrade our shield generator. Like, people complained at me when I was doing the stealth ship run. Oh, you're not upgrading your stealth. Well, yeah, the, the first thing you want to do is a stealth ship. Like, really, the first thing you want to do is just get extra scrap for a shield. Because you need a shield. If you don't get a shield, well, you're going to be spending a fortune in repairs. Like, there is no point in doing uh, anything else but saving up for the, the shield. Shield is so important. Because it means you don't spend scrap on the repairs. And if you do... That's kind of wasted scrap that you could be using to snowball. Seriously, design has to be built around snowballing. Uh, we'll take here, then distress call, I think. Yeah. We're going to go up the bottom side of the map. Okay, pulsar. And they're going to hack my... Oh, well. No artillery beam isn't the worst case in the world. Really? You're going to shoot me with that? Okay, I assume you've got like a repair drone or something. Come on, let me get my burst off before the pulse. Thank you. I hit you once, and my shield is down. But your weapons are down. I might take your weapons down just in case, because although your weapons can't get through my shield, you might not have your weapons down forever, and I might have my shields down, so... And my weapons are down. Excellent. Weapons and shield done. This is like my worst ni uh, worst nightmare. This is not what I want. I need to shoot me in the cockpit because they're quite a dodgy craft. Oh god, they've got the weapons up again. Oi! The oxygen! Give me that back. Uh, no, I'm not accepting this offer of like 9 scrap. I know this is early game, but seriously. And it was just about to fire. Oh, well, they hacked it as well, so. Doesn't really matter. And now you die. Come on. There we go. Yeah, 13 scrap. That's a little bit more. And I can't buy anything, apparently, because I'm still in danger. I was going to buy a second level of shield, but fine. I found a lone survivor. He states that he was an infantryman before being stranded. He happily lost his service in the time in exchange for getting off that rock. Okay. Cool. So I have a second NG. Um, there's only like a couple of stations because they've improved by manning them. So I'm going to do the doors. Because honestly, it's basically a three level of upgrade with doors. Uh, I will take it. And... Bam! I now have a second level of shield. Alright, uh, I'm going to try going here. I could try and cross in front. I don't know if that's really feasible, though. Yeah, I'm going to not be able to cross in front of the enemy fleet. I've also installed the... I can't remember it's called. Like, predictive fleet thingy? The fleet, basically, it's like it shows you the moves ahead of just one job. It shows you like three moves ahead. You can get them in different flavors, like 25 moves ahead. I've got, um, I think, three moves ahead. The default, of course, is, you know, you can see one move ahead of the enemy fleet. Oh, God, I hate the projector. Because it does so much damage when it hits. That's med bait. Nope, shields. Nope. Okay, that's not the worst. I'm taking out their uh, piloting because... A lot of AIs have this thing, like, if they get low on health, they'll be like, okay, well, I'm going to activate the FTL, and if I jump, I do crap tons of the damage to you, because I basically, like, I FTL jump into you. And I don't want that. So I always make sure, like, if I take out the weapons, I can then take out their uh, ability to jump and do that. There we go. See? Enemy FTL delay. They're trying to blow. And artillery beam. 
now. Oh yeah. Right, let's have a look at the ship. Crew, Charlie. Your name is not Charlie anymore. We are changing it. Your name is now Zack the Awesome. Um, Zack. Hi, Zack. Right, who's here? Aid a civilian ship. Of course we'll aid a civilian ship. Ooh. See, now this is one situation, like, if they didn't have a, a thing that teleports through shields, I can't remember what it's called, bomb launcher, there we go. If they didn't have a bomb launcher, i just take out the O2 and just sit here, because they can't repair the O2 because it's devoid from the rest of the ship. But since they've got something that can go through shields, I'm gonna have to be, like, duty-bound to just not allow that to happen and take it out. Boop, boop. I'm going to try and improve my chances against the bomb by temporarily going off O2. Okay, O2, artillery, and space. There we go. I'll put some uh, energy back into our O2 production now. What do I want to shoot? What do I want to shoot? I assume they're already repairing that. It'll be too long to take their O2 out. Take the parting out just in case they try to jump. They probably won't. Or, you know, dead. I like dead. Dead works as well. Ooh, the civilian ship that we were saving gave us a piece of equipment, a Leviathan missile battery. Let's look at that puppy. Equipment. Heavy artillery uh, battery that fires a swarm of missiles that deal three damage to hull, but much less to systems and crew. Stun three seconds. System damage looks like two. Goes off the screen that I currently see. Uh, shield pierce five, so basically the full shield pierce. Uh, normal damage three. Shots per charge one. Requires a missile charge... 13 required power 2. Okay, so basically you can't use it as much to destroy systems, but it still does a load of damage. That's fine by me. Okay, uh, we did save this load then, didn't we? Um, as much as I hate to do it, like, we're going to be jumping ahead of the enemy fleet. This is what I mean, by the way, about the... See, I can see we're going to be jumping in, like, one, two, three turns time. We're going to have to jump all the way to the exit now. And I will buy all the fuel I can, because I've learned my lesson. If there's one thing you run out of, it is fuel. Now, I could jump and then jump back, because they jump to there. Then they'd be jumping to here, and I'd, I'd be fine. But it would cost me two fuel. And honestly, I don't think two fuel is worth it, because it might be an empty beacon. Two fuel to go to a beacon. Eh, no, I'd rather jump early. So we're going to jump to the next sector. Um, I will probably jump to the north one, because one thing I've learned is if you jump to a nebula sector... Enemy fleets don't go slower through a nebula sector. If they go slower through nebulas in normal sectors. There we go. I've just got my thought pattern right. Um, they go slower through nebulas in normal sectors. They go the same speed as normal through nebulas in nebula sectors. Because I assume they're like, yeah, we know the nebula. We were expecting it or something. I don't know. Um, so there's no point going to a nebula sector, apparently. Eh. Uh, but if we go up north, we've got a choice of you know, a fighty sector or a civilian sector. So at least we have that choice. So I'm already going to jump to circle uh, and that'll be in the next episode. So one episode per sector, that will mean that they vary in length. Uh, some of them will be long, like probably the boss battle. Some of them will be short, like ones where we die early on. I'm looking at you, Redtail. But yeah, I've been Aerosim. If you enjoyed, please like, not subscribe, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for letting me know that you love seeing FTL on the channel, because frankly, I kind of like playing it, especially every, like, year I just come back to it, especially around Christmas, because it's one of the things I can play on a laptop. Um, it's a fun game. I really do like it. And of course, the model list will be blur if not shout at me on Twitter. But until next time, stay shiny.